Hey friends! I'm doing a new kind of video today, a video that I have not done before, nothing of this sort. But I've seen them on YouTube and I personally like watching them, so I figured I'd give it a try. I feel that's particularly good timing what with the talks of this new recycling scheme going on at Lush. Right now, the new scheme only applies to the UK. It's not known yet if it's gonna come to North America as well. If by the time I edit this video, there's any news, I'll make sure to put it at the bottom of the screen. If not, as we receive more news, I'll be updating the description box of the video. So make sure you check the description box for the most up-to-date information about the recycling scheme. So Lush has always offered this sort of scheme, I guess that's their word for it, where if you bring in five black pots, washed of course, make sure you wash them out, don't be that guy, you can trade them in for a fresh face mask in the store. So the reason Lush has always done this is because black plastic is harder to recycle, so they'd rather you bring it back and that way they can reuse it themselves. I think because of the pandemic, they've stopped doing it in store for now. Again, if I get more information about that, the updated info will be in the description box of this video so you can read it. But now the UK is also offering incentives for bringing in your clear plastic. So they're still offering the fresh face mask for five black pots of any size excluding the sample size. But now they'll also give you 50 pence off your order for every clear plastic container you bring in of Lush. Don't be bringing in your Tupperware or anything. <laughs> they want their own bottles back and they will give you 50 cents per on your order for that day for as many bottles or pots that you bring in. So what I'm doing today is showing you guys my empties of 2020. Yes, I've been saving all of my bottles and tubs since 2020 began because I wanted to show you guys what I got through in the year, give you guys kind of a little bit of a review how I liked those products. And I feel like this is almost an extension of my Lush collection videos, which I'll post a link up here to my Lush playlist. And I've done updated collection videos every year for the last couple years or so. But these are things that maybe you didn't get to see in those collection videos because they've already been used up at that point. But I did at one point own them, I did use them. And so of course, I have an opinion. I have quite a few, as you can see, so Let's just jump right into it, shall we? The first thing I pulled out is a little Don't Rain On My Parade shower gel. And this bottle <laughs> came out in 2017. I bought it used and out of date on Mercari because I'd never experienced it before and I love violet scents. So of course I wanted a bottle for myself. Apparently this shares a scent with the Violet Nights bath oil, which recently came out in a Lush kitchen subscription box. I've unboxed all but one. So again, keep an eye out for a card up here and I'll show you guys the box that that came in. My son actually used most of this one, so I didn't get to enjoy it as much as I would have liked, but it's violet with blueberry juice and vanilla. And it's kind of a weird scent to my nose. The vanilla almost makes it smell like yogurt that's gone off. Um, it's sort of like the comforter to me in that way. There's days where I smell this and it's like, wow, that's incredible. All I get is violet with a little bit of sweet, beautiful. And then there's days like today where it literally smells like sour yogurt. So yeah, that's an interesting one for sure. Next. Deep Sleep Shower Jelly. This was recently discontinued, or not that recently, I suppose. It was a few months ago it got discontinued. I still have another big pot like this. It was one of my favorite shower jellies. I love shower jellies, by the way. But this was lavender, chamomile, right? Sunflower seed infusion, orange juice, lavender, chamomile, more lavender, neroli, and gardenia. It was a very herbal lavender, which I enjoy. And it's just a real shame that they stopped making it because I absolutely loved it, which I think you'll see as we go on because I'm pretty sure I have at least one more pot of deep sleep in here. Next, oh, a bunch of jellies. Okay, so first off, this is not a jelly per se, but a jelly face mask. 
And these were discontinued altogether at some point last year, maybe even the year before, but this was my favorite of the jelly face masks. Typically my face is too sensitive for most masks, so I really loved the jelly ones and it's a super, super shame that they're not making them anymore. This one, The Birth of Venus, was lavender, chamomile, and seawater. Lavender and chamomile, you sense a theme, yes? It also had rose infusion and olibamin, olibanum? and olibanum oil, which is frankincense, and myrrh. Interesting. But yeah, I really liked how this felt on my skin. It didn't make me break out, which I can't say for most masks, so I missed that one for sure. Another deep sleep, <laughs> as suspected. And we have a Santa's belly. This is in the So White, or Once Upon a Time scent family. So it just smells like very crisp, apple it's not a super sweet apple smell or like a candy apple smell it smells like apples like a punch of apple to the face i didn't love this jelly though it was really cute it was shaped like santa's belly and it had like a little belt buckle in it and everything but it fell apart really really easily which i did not love refresher shower jelly this one hasn't been around for quite a while. In fact, this particular pot was made in August of 2017. And Refresher reminds me a lot of Over and Over Bath Bomb, which is also no longer around, but it just smelled like Lemon Pledge in the best possible way. If I'm not mistaken, soon we're going to have another shower jelly that's actually three colors layered. It's a blue, a pink, and a yellow, if I'm not mistaken. And the yellow layer is refresher scented. So I'm excited to have it back in some format, but yeah, this one was awesome. I made this one stretch for a long while because I really, really liked it and it was very hard to find. Conga shower jelly. I believe that this is still mainline and it's like a raspberry scent, vanilla and raspberry. It reminds me of the raspberry milkshake soap that came out for Mother's Day in 20... 19, 2018, eh, one of those. Um, it's okay, I like it enough. I usually really love raspberry scents, but I felt like the raspberry was very subtle. It's more of a creamy sweet smell than a zingy tart fruity smell, which is what I was hoping for. So it's all right, I haven't bought it again. Mamma Mia shower scrub. I hope, I believe this is coming back for Mother's Day this year. It is a Mother's Day release usually, and it's a pink shower scrub with grapefruit, rose clay, and Himalayan salt. I honestly don't even know how to describe this scent. It's clean and fresh and floral all at once. Um, it's just a beautiful scent, incredible texture for a scrub. It leaves you super exfoliated and super moisturized. Probably my favorite scrub that Lush has ever made or that I've ever tried from Lush anyway. Again, sea salt, pink grapefruit, Himalayan salt, bergamot oil, rosewood oil, vanilla absolute, and rose clay. Really, really love this. If it does come out again for Mother's Day, I will be picking up another one of these. Sleepy, this is an eight ounce bottle, yes, of Sleepy. And this was also my son's. He goes through a lot of this. Sleepy is in the Twilight or Sleepy scent family, so it's a sweet lavender scent, and it is mainline. Yummy Mummy, this was from one of the exclusive um, Lush Labs releases, I wanna say. They don't even do Lush Labs anymore. That was short-lived, huh? But this is a, or it was, a shower jelly in the Yummy Mummy scent, which is fresh strawberry, Tonka Absolute, and Brazilian orange oil. Uh, I really loved this one. It was a really pretty lilac color. It was very moisturizing for a shower jelly, and I just really liked the scent. I love the Yummy Mummy scent family. So if this ever comes back, which I don't think it will, I mean, they might surprise us in a subscription box or something, but this was great. Chris Tingle. Chris Tingle was a Christmas body conditioner. Now it is available year round and it's just called Tingle. I really like it. It's spearmint and grapefruit oil. I find it to be really, really moisturizing. And what I really like about it is that it does leave your skin tingly. Um, so be warned, I guess, if that's something you don't necessarily want. But if you're feeling achy or something, I really like this product. I feel like I haven't even made a dent in this bag yet. Lush Lime Shower Smoothie. So this is one of the subscription box items and I'd never heard of a shower smoothie before this. So I was a little out of my element as far as how to even use it. 
Turns out it's a really, really moisturizing soap, basically, or like shower cream. I didn't love it upon first sniff, but I really liked it once I started using it in the shower and I felt like it was gone too quickly. That might be because since it was a creamier product, I felt like I needed more of it to get a proper lather. And so that coupled with the fact that it's a tiny pot, I think I maybe used it like five times. But this is fresh butternut squash infusion at its base, which is interesting. Extra virgin olive oil, almond oil, rapeseed oil, coconut oil, lime juice. So there's so many oils before you even get into like literally any other ingredient. Strawberries, grapefruit oil, and orange flower absolute. Would I buy it again if it became available? I honestly don't know, but um, I didn't hate it. So there's something. <laughs> Another Santa's belly. I bought a lot of these a couple years ago, so. Berry Berry Christmas. This is another one of those that I bought out of date because it hasn't been released as long as I've been into Lush, but I saw it come up on Mercari or eBay or something and I was very, very curious. So this is festive cranberry infusion and antioxidant blueberry juice. It also includes sweet wild orange oil, bergamot oil, olive leaf absolute, among other things. And this actually reminded me a lot, an, like an awful lot of Plum Rain. It was maybe slightly more floral or, well, it doesn't have any flowers in it, does it? Maybe a little more tart, not quite as sweet as Plum Rain but it definitely reminds me a lot of Plum Rain. This, if it came up again, I would absolutely buy. But then again, I'd also buy Plum Rain. I don't know why they got rid of it. This was such a popular product, I thought, but eh, what do I know? Next, Ectoplasm. Ectoplasm came out for Halloween 2019, if I'm not mistaken. And I bought this bottle from the UK specifically because it said shower scream on it <laughs> and the North American version just said shower cream. Oh no, this was created in 2018 apparently. Wow, okay, so it's even older than I thought. I did not love this because of the texture. The smell was exactly like Sunny Delight to me, which I loved, but I'm not a big fan of shower creams for the same reason that I didn't love, love the shower smoothie. I feel like the texture does not allow for a good lather. And a good lather experience for me is very important. Not quite as important as the scent, but important enough where it's like, I don't think I'd buy this again. This ended up being really popular in all of the Lush groups I'm in on Facebook and whatnot. People are constantly in search of this. Um, can't imagine why, to be honest, but there you go. Yet another Santa's belly, lots of lids. Aha, okay, so this is, or was, Yog Dog Body Conditioner. And this came out in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Body conditioners are basically like lotions that you use in the shower, but you wash them off the way you do hair conditioner before you get out of the shower and they leave you moisturized without feeling sticky. This is a maple syrup water base that also has almond oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, oat kernel oil, iliap, butter. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. So those are all the moisturizing bits. And then as far as the scent notes on top of, of course, the maple syrup water, you've got clove bud oil and a lang lang oil. So that sounds very simple, but I like Yognog a lot for the holidays in particular, which is usually when it comes out. Um, it gives almost like a flung smell to me, like a burnt caramel smell. It's not my favorite, but I do enjoy it. So I did get the body conditioner. And then speaking of Christmas releases, we've got Drummer's Drumming and I bought this in 2019. This was scented like peachy, the peachy bath bomb that originally came out in Valentine's of 2019, no, 2018 if I'm not mistaken. I wanna say that now it's a year round product, but I might be wrong. This was okay. I really didn't care for the scent in this format. I'm starting to wonder if it's just that I don't care for the scent to be honest. It's agave syrup, grapefruit oil, Davana oil, whatever that is, Alemi oil, again, no clue, Tajeti oil, hey, and fresh peach juice. At least I recognize that one. I really love peaches as a concept 
and I was very excited when Lush started coming out with peach scented things because you don't typically see that at Lush or anywhere else. But yeah, it's not, not my favorite. It's not something that I enjoy as much as I hoped I would. I'm trying to get all these lids out of the way so that I know how many bottles I've got left. Okay, quite a few things left yet, actually. Uh, let the good times roll. This is a face and body cleanser. Is that what it says? Yes, cleanser. I use it exclusively for my face. It's actually the only face soap that I use now. I bought a little one so that I could try it out and see how I liked it after getting a sample in one of my orders. And turns out I love it. So now I have a big pot in my bathroom and this is a scrub which usually i wouldn't go for scrubs because again my skin is sensitive the abrasion is not the best thing for me but it's balanced out in such a way with the moisturizers that it actually it just leaves my skin absolutely perfect i've never had any issue with it and that's very rare for me so this is my new ride or die whoosh shower jelly which to my knowledge is still mainline they actually came out with a bubble bar in the whoosh scent, two bubble bars if I'm not mistaken. A reusable one that's shaped like a light bulb and another one that's black if I'm not mistaken and looks kind of cratery and planet-like. I'll probably post pictures and hopefully names if I can find them. Um, but I really like whoosh. It says really zesty citrus scent. And let me see if I can find the ingredients for you guys. Honey. Perfume. I really hate when they just put perfume because that's not helpful to me at all. Fresh lemon juice, fresh grapefruit juice, fresh lime juice, grapefruit oil, rosemary oil, geranium oil. So a little bit of floral, a little bit of herbal, mostly citrus. I really like this scent. Butter Bear Shower Jelly. This one came out in 2018 also, I want to say. Yes, 2018 for the Christmas uh, release. And it was adorable, shaped like a little butter bear. It was cream color just like the bath bomb and the soap usually is. Butter Bear is just a very simple light vanilla mostly cocoa butter scent. Yeah cocoa butter and a lang, -lang oil and synthetic musk. I really like it. It's nice and light. Um, it's just a, a nice creamy smell. These fell apart instantly. The moment you opened the lid and looked at Butter Bear he went and just fell apart. So that was annoying, but it smelled really, really nice. That's probably why they didn't bring them back this last year, but I'm just speculating. We have a Snow Fairy gift-sized body conditioner. You already know how body conditioners work. This is Snow Fairy scented. Snow Fairy is a very synthetic, artificial smelling, sweet um, bubble gum type. I almost said flavor, not flavor, scent. It is, according to this, candy floss water. Okay, so literally sugar water. Cherry infusion, jojoba oil, avocado butter, mango butter, and cocoa butter, along with synthetic musk, our old friend synthetic musk. Um, Snow Fairy is not something that I usually would have gone for typically, but it did grow on me, and now every chance I get to buy Snow Fairy, I do. So there you go. FOMO jelly face mask. This is another one of those discontinued face masks that I finished this last year, even though I think it went out of date long before that. Um, and this one is Rose and Neroli. So um, Rose, just like the other one, the Birth of Venus, but this one has Neroli instead of the lavender and chamomile. I preferred Birth of Venus, but this one was also really nice on my skin. This one was like the pinky one. And Honestly, I'll take either of them if they ever come back. Yet another deep sleep. And I think all I've got left now are shower gels. So we have cinders. I hated cinders. <laughs> Why did I hate cinders? This is also another one of those very popular products um, in the same vein of ectoplasm. People seem to really, really love cinders and they're always looking for it. I can't understand why. It was marketed, promised, to be kind of like a spicy pumpkin scent, but I get zero spice from this. It's just sweet. And it was almost sickly sweet to me. It was too much. So it's got pumpkin seed oil, which actually pumpkin seeds are really disgusting <laughs> to me anyway. So I don't know why they would use that. I'm assuming it's moisturizing and nobody's asking me to eat this. So fair enough. Um, maple syrup, I believe it. Aloe vera paprika. 
I would never have guessed. Almond oil, orange oil, cinnamon leaf oil, again, wouldn't have guessed. Cinnamon powder, ginger, nutmeg, allspice, clove. Where were any of these to my nose? Like, it just smells like sweet. It smells like sweet trying to be spice, but I did not detect any of those spices, let alone all of them. So this was just a real big letdown. And I was desperate to use this bottle up because I was desperate to see it go. Bubbly, I really, really liked this one. This was another Mercari find way after the fact. This bottle was made in 2017. And this is in the same scent family as Snow Showers, Celebrate. It's a boozy orange scent. And it usually comes out or came out during the Christmas season. They haven't released this probably since 2017. Vine Leaf, Sweet Wild Orange Oil, Lime Oil, Grape Juice. And yeah, that grape, really balances the orange out. So it's just super, super sweet punch of orange. I love this one. This would definitely be a rebuy if it ever became available again. For this last holiday season, they came out with a Celebrate Body Milk, but I don't think, I don't remember if you could just buy it a la carte. I think you had to buy it as part of a gift set. Either way, by the time I got around to buying Christmas things, it wasn't available. So there you go. Yognog shower gel. I already gave you guys a scent rundown for this one. So there's the shower gel. It was okay. Again, I feel lukewarm about Yognog at most. I felt like I had to buy it to experience it. And now I have, and I have no desire to buy it again. I didn't buy any Yognog things in 2020. Olive branch. This is one of my favorite mainline scents. It's the same scent family as Pansy. And it's basically orange flower. Like that's all I get is orange flower when I smell it. And I am so okay with that. Vine leaf infusion, fresh mandarin juice, olive oil, bergamot oil, lemon oil, orange flower absolute. So it's the last on the list as far as the scent ingredients, but that's really just, it envelops you in orange flower. And I love that. It's raining men. So this was, Oh, very dirty, but also <laughs> this was discontinued um, and re-released. Like you can still buy this shower gel, but now it's called Honey, I Wash the Kids, which is the scent family it belongs to. I don't know why when they released the shower gel, they called it It's Raining Men instead of just calling it Honey, I Wash the Kids. That's what the soap is called that shares its scent. Um, but still, that kind of makes this a little special, right? Because you can't find the bottles with this label anymore. I want to say this was the very first Lush product I ever bought myself at a Lush store. And I finally finished it at some point in 2020. And Honey, I Wash the Kids, in case you're new to this planet, is a honey, toffee, caramelly type smell. It's got honey as a very first ingredient. Rose hips, lotus flower, tiger lily infusion, Brazilian orange oil, and bergamot oil. Obviously this product is not vegan because it has honey in it in case that is a concern for you. I absolutely love it though. Yet another sleepy, which we've already discussed. A snow fairy shower gel, which we haven't discussed the shower gel, but we've discussed the scent. You guys know what this is about. Lord of Mist Rule Shower Cream. This is now available online all year round. No longer an exclusive, except you can't get it in the stores. It has to be online. It's no longer a shower cream, which this is. Now it's a shower gel, and I much prefer that format, as I've already explained. So I'm glad to see that one go, because now I can get to using my shower gel. Wash behind your ears. I bought this again on Mercari out of date because I was very excited about the scent notes and I really wanted to experience it for myself. And I despised it. I thought it was so bad. It smelled to me like carrots that had gone off. I don't even know if there's carrots in this. Uh, oh, carrot infusion is actually the very first scent note ingredient. Followed by neroli oil, rose oil, jasmine absolute, and gardenia extract. So I was expecting all the florals, all the heady florals, which is right up my alley. The label even says a fresh jasmine, gardenia, and rose gel wash to lavish skin. That sounds right up my alley. I didn't get jasmine, gardenia, or rose. I got carrot. Like imagine just shoving two carrots up your nose. That's what this smelled like to me. And so I was very disappointed and I was very much in a rush to just finish that bottle and have it be gone from my life. The very last thing I have in my bag of goodies here is 
my Sonic Death Monkey from my kitchen subscription box, this tiny baby bottle. I love Sonic Death Monkey so much. Unfortunately, so does my son. So he actually opened my bottle and dumped the entire thing into one bath. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a sad day for sure. Luckily, I still have a bigger bottle from when Lush released the community favorites, exclusives, whatever, um, that I bought basically sight unseen. I had never smelled Sonic Death Monkey at that point, but again, it sounded good to me, so I took the chance and I'm glad I did because I loved it. It is coffee, cocoa powder, hibiscus flower, uh, lime juice, sweet wild orange oil, tangerine oil, vanilla absolute, and hemp oil. So it's touted as being coffee and cocoa powder, but to my nose, this is 100% Tootsie Pops. Not Tootsie Rolls, Tootsie Pops, the lollipops that have Tootsie Rolls in them. That's what this smells like to me. It is incredible to die for. I will take Sonic Death Monkey in any form. Thank you very much. The thing about the shower gel, which catches most people off guard is that it's incredibly runny. And if you're not expecting that, you might think something is wrong with your shower gel. It's not, that's just how that particular formula is. But again, Sonic Death Monkey, in any and all forms that Lush decides to release it, I will be more than happy to buy again. Please Lush, take my money. So that's it. <laughs> Not much, right? That is all of the Lush stuff that I used in 2020. Obviously, I wasn't able to show you guys things like bubble bars, shampoo bars, bath bombs. Those are just gone <laughs> when you use them. So there should have been much more in here if I had any sort of a way to show you guys those things. How does this compare to your Lush usage in any given year? And were there any products you saw here today that you're a particularly big fan of? Do you disagree with some of my assessments? I'd love to hear your opinions. So of course, let me know in the comments and we can have a conversation about it. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.